So today we're going to be setting up the acetylation of an unknown alcohol lab. So we have our unknown alcohol number 65 here, probably about two milliliters, and some glacial acetic acid, and a bottle of concentrated 18 molar sulfuric acid. And we're gonna be setting this up in a five milliliter conical vial. So in drawer D here, we'll fetch out a five milliliter conical vial that's fairly clean. And we need a condenser on top and we'll need an assembly to attach that. We're actually going to clamp the condenser to the ring stand so we can put the vial in there. And we'll need the hot block. I've got a stirring hot plate out already. And we need a spin vane to go in there. And it's going to get black anyway with the sulfuric acid, so I'm going to use the dirty one. Well, I don't know if it's dirty, maybe it's stained. So we're going to put the spin vane in there, and we are going to hook up our little block. And a cap and an o-ring. One of the smaller o-rings for this. Thinner o-rings. Put the cap on there and roll the O-ring around. Make sure that doesn't come off. So when that's attached, we'll be able to just clamp the condenser and the O-ring will keep the, or the cap will keep the thing in place. So I'm gonna set that up so that my clamp's about halfway up the condenser. Just a little bit. And then we'll attach our hoses. Oops, that's not the right hose. There we go. Hmm. Should be another latex hose in there somewhere. Here it is. So we have our two latex hoses. That black hose is not what we want. And as always, we want to wet these before we put them on. So I'll get a little water in a beaker. That will allow us to put them on there nice and tight so they don't pop off in the middle of the reaction. The top one wants to be hooked up to a little weight, hang in the sink, and the bottom one hook up to our cold water, and we can turn that on, get a nice flow rate going. So there's our assembly. And we can go ahead and leave that water running. And we don't want it running really fast. That seems like a nice flow rate. Looks pretty good. So now I'm going to raise that up. So I can detach my vial. Looks like that needs to be clamped on a little better. And we want to measure out about 1.75 milliliters of our unknown alcohol. But first I'm gonna go and uh, weigh the vial. Because we wanna get an exact mass since we don't actually know what the density of this alcohol is. Nor do we know the, uh, whether it's a five carbon or a six carbon alcohol, so we don't know its formula mass. We will know that eventually, but not yet. So at 21.244 grams, that's the tear weight of the five milliliter conical vial with the spin vane in it.
And now I'm going to use the one milliliter syringe to transfer 1.75 milliliters of this alcohol. So basically a full syringe. There's one milliliter. And then another 0.75. And we'll cap that up. We don't spill the rest of our alcohol. And that can be disassembled. These alcohols are fairly volatile, so I'll just disassemble, disassemble that and let it uh, dry over the weekend. And we'll go get a mass of our alcohol. Looks like it's about two milliliters, so the Spin vein is taking up at about 0.25 milliliters of volume. And it looks like we're now stabilizing at about 22.744 grams. 22.744 grams, so you can get the mass of the alcohol added by difference. You'll notice that this vial is going to be pretty full, but it's a 5 milliliter vial to that line. And there's a little bit of extra space so we can fill it with a little bit more than five milliliters and it's going to be quite full with the acetic acid. I'm going to pipette that into a graduated cylinder and then use the pipette to transfer it that aside so I don't knock it over. Actually a good way to make sure that that doesn't fall over is to set it into another hot block. That way I can't tip it. And that way I can start heating this one up. We're going to want a temperature between 150 and 160. So I'm going to crank that up to about 200 on the dial and start that hot block heating. That'll speed things up a little once I get the reaction set up. More drops. That's three and a half milliliters of acetic acid. Set that aside. And we're just going to add that to the alcohol. see that the vial is overfilled almost completely up to the neck. And now I want to add three drops of the concentrated sulfuric acid. A clean pipette.
And this I want to be certain not to get on myself. And to avoid contaminating the cap, it's got one of those penny head stoppers so I can hold it in my fingers. And I just want three drops, just as a catalyst. There we go. I'm going to rinse that before I put it in the glass waste because it has sulfuric acid on it. Set that aside. So now I can attach my conical vial to the assembly. Making sure it's fairly tight. And I'm going to loosen this because you always want to tighten this last. And I'll drop that down in. Turn on the spinner to the setting of 600 so it's spinning nice and fast. Now I'm going to clamp that in tightly so that it's vertical. So we got this spinning at 600, we got this at 200. I'm going to put my blocks on there. And now I'll grab a thermometer. These 260 degree thermometers so we can measure the temperature of the block. I'll have to move those a little bit so there's room for the thermometer to fit. So that's really all there is to the setup of this one. We've got a little bit of a vortex going in there. Maybe I'll crank this up a little more up to 750 so you can see the vortex. So we got a good stirring rate going. And we want to get the reflux line somewhere in that bottom third of the condenser. And I'll turn on the water a little bit higher so we can get some of those air bubbles out of there. That way we can see the reflux line better. So now it's just a matter of getting that up so that we actually have reflux and then we're going to let it stir and reflux for an hour. But we don't want to start the timer until the reflux actually begins. So these two pipettes that had acid in them will rinse. Before we stick those in the glass waste. graduated cylinder that had acetic acid in we'll also rinse. Since that's water soluble there's no need to clean it with soap. We'll just rinse it out. Give it a little sniff to make sure it doesn't smell like vinegar. Yeah, a couple more rinses. clean. Just let that evaporate. So I'm going to crank this up to 250. Get that temperature up nice and fast. And I'll stick this unknown alcohol 65 down in case I need it. Sulfuric acid actually came from my research lab. We'll put that away later. So now we watch the pot boil. Over time, though, with sulfuric acid, since it's a dehydrating acid, you'll notice it's actually a little bit yellow anyway, which means it's not quite pure. Uh, it tends to make your reaction mixture go dark. 
when we purify it and distill it, the ester product will be colorless. But often reactions with sulfuric acid end up going pretty dark. Acetic acid boils at about 120 degrees, roughly, if I recall correctly. So we're going to be heating it a little bit hotter than the boiling point of the acetic acid. At least a block temperature above the boiling point of acetic acid, so we get a good reflux. The vortex will be less clear as it starts boiling, but you can see that there are some bubbles coming up. If I spread that out a little, you can see it's starting to kind of bubble. We got a little bit of a bubble tornado. That's a good sign. And you can start to see some condensate here. And we're up around 145, so we're getting close. You can see it's bubbling significantly more vigorously, and you can definitely see that reflux line right there, maybe, where it's condensing and drifting back in. And our reflux is probably going to go into the condenser because the vial is so full. So at this point I'm going to lower this a little bit on the top plate so I don't overshoot. I'm at about 150. If I take this back.